This week's word of the week is going to be throat. A weld throat. Got it up here. And I drew one for a fillet weld and then a uh, groove weld here. Uh, there's one, there's actually three in the fillet weld and only one in the uh, groove weld. But let's read the definition of a throat. I got it over here on the computer. The throat of the weld is the distance from the center of the face to the root of the weld. Typically, the depth of the throat should be at least as thick as the thickness of the metal you're welding. That's a, a caveman process, I guess you could say. I mean, you need to do some calculations to figure out how big the throat needs to be. But a general rule of thumb is it, it uh, you know, has to be at least as thick as the thickness of the metal that you're welding. It's not a bad thing to start with, um, depending on what you're doing and how much you know, weight and stress and things like that is going to be on whatever you're welding. Um, I'm going to section this off because I kind of got a little jumbled here. When I started doing the drawing, it wasn't that easy to draw. So that's um, just the title up there. Um, the first one we're going to go to, we'll go to the smallest one first. Um, and this fill well, that's a th theoretical throw. And you can see there's a triangle right here for where this weld is. Theoretically, that's how big your throat is. It's not looking at the fact that you are going to have penetration or you're going to have uh, face reinforcement here. It's just the triangle of the fillet weld. So that's your theoretical throw. It's theoretically, it's not going to get any bigger than that, right? But we all know that it's going to. So we're going to go to the next one. The next biggest one here is going to be your effective throw. Uh, that is to, again, where this triangle is going out to the face reinforcement to the penetration. So it's going all the way down here where your penetration is. So you should have some penetration going past the actual uh, theoretical throat. Uh, the effective throat is basically the, the most important throat. It's, gonna re it's where you're going to get all your integrity for the fellow weld. So the effective throat is very important. And the last one, the third throat on here is your actual throat. That's going all the way out, your, your face reinforcement, all the way to your penetration. Um, that's your actual throat. Uh, most calculations, if you're doing weld size or bead size for a fillet weld, are going to come off this effective throat. You can go into the actual throat, and what they'll do is they'll break that into a triangle. So you're going to lose a little bit here. They're going to take it like this. They're going to make a triangle. They're going to do some trig. And this does give you a little bit more uh, strength, but for the most part, it's usually calculated through the effective throw if you're looking to figure out how big a fillet weld needs to be uh, for whatever application you're using. So hopefully that clears up what the throats are on a fillet weld. Again, there's three, theoretical, effective, and actual. These are things you need to know. The most important thing you need to know is the throat. Basically, you need to know that this is called the throat. Uh, if you know all three of these, you're doing better than the average welder. So. Uh, let's go over here to this groove, um, groove weld over here, or groove joint. Um, throat, it's just the middle. They don't take into the uh, root convexity uh, or the face reinforcement. The throat of a, a groove weld is just right here, where the theoretical line goes at the top and the, the bottom there. So, and it's just called your throat. They don't have these three designations for a groove weld. So, Typically when you're thinking of throat, you're thinking of this right here because your depth of penetration is going to give you all your strength right here in this um, groove weld anyways. With the, with the fillet weld, if there's no throat, there's no weld. It's the integrity of the entire fillet weld. So what we'll do now is we'll look at a couple of uh, etches of um, some fillet welds here and we can kind of point out where these three throats are. So we'll uh, pull them up on the big screen here and we'll take a look at those. This is a uh, fillet weld etch done on a uh, fillet weld both sides on a T-joint. And it has a good look at your uh, theoretical throat as well as your effective throat. Your actual throat, there's not a lot of convexity to this. So we're going to skip the actual throat on this. And we'll define the theoretical throat first, because that's the smallest, and then the effective throat um, after that. So what they're going to do for theoretic throat, Remember how we had that dashed line in there? That's your theoretic throat size. So we're going to come down here. We're going to write theoretical throat. So you would take that measurement, if you were um, doing a calculation based off the theoretical throat, and it's basic trigonometry again. i add this right here, right? And then if you're talking about the effective throat, 
you're going to come off the penetration here, again right here, if you're effective, they're open. So you go a little bit deeper because that's good penetration there. If you're looking at this edge, that's an acceptable weld um, as long as the, the leg size is good and everything. So we'll look at a different one that has a little bit more convexity on the face, more face reinforcement, and uh, look at the effective throw, or the effective throw, the actual throw, sorry. This is another etch here we got of the actual throw that we're going to go over. Um, I like this one. It's got some face reinforcement, but it's really not doing anything. So remember we were talking about the effective throw. That's um, what, where most weld strength comes from. But the actual throw is going to come off the top of the face reinforcement here and the weld penetration here. And that is going to be your actual throw. You're looking for the entire size of the throat, that's it. Now, going back to the effective, you go right across like this, and you go in here. And you can imagine that this, if you made that into a triangle there, it's not adding very much strength to that weld. So that's why the effective throat is typically where you get calculations off of uh, weld strength. Or how, how big a weld needs to be for whatever application, application you're using. So um, that's all I got for today. Hopefully that explains what the weld throat is. The main thing you need to know is what the throat is. The three um, types of throats that are going to fill a weld, that's good to know. Even you're ahead of the game if you know that, but you really need to know what a weld throat is. So thanks for watching. I'm subscribed to TV Weld, and we'll see you again next week.